cried that night. John Peel played teenage kicks on his late night radio one show. And that was before he uttered the words, I will never forget. It's not the most wonderful record you ever heard in the world. In fact, I'm going to play it again. I cried because I thought the music industry had beat me. I just returned from London, doing the rounds, flogging teenage kicks to record labels. None of them wanted to know. I couldn't understand it. Here we had a great record from a great band recorded in the back streets of Belfast for £200 over cans of beer, bags of crisps and a few steel sandwiches. And these people in the big spoke just didn't get it. I cried because I thought I'd let the band down. The undertones were brilliant. I loved them. This was the chance to put Noah Ireland back on the music map and that ch chance had just gone down the tube. But John Peel got it. He got it straight away. He knew what the record was all about. He knew what Good Vibrations was all about. He could hear the energy in that song. Did he know it was going to become one of Ireland's greatest rock and roll songs of all time? The band didn't think it was their best song. He knew it, I knew it. We were right, CBS, CMI, Rough Trade, and all the other record companies were wrong. I'd played Teenage Kicks to them, and some of them told me it was the worst record that they ever heard. From the moment Peely played Kicks, my world and that of the band changed forever. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to know me. I was wined and dined, taken to gigs, and the boys got their contract. That's how we got them, and things were about to start happening. Dave Hyman, with whom I'd set up the building in 102 Great Victoria Street, and had been a close friend from the 60s, wanted to set up Jeff's Books, an anarchist bookshop, with a printing press and everything else. And he got the building, so we decided to do a benefit from a big punk gig in Belfast. The whole pig, the punk thing it had really taken off, but there were still not very few gigs for the bands to play, particularly involving local talent in Belfast. The Clash had visited and were a few, and, and didn't get to play, and Elvis Costello had played, but we wanted to do a homegrown concert, bring the undertones down from Derry, and with the other three records we had out at that point, Rudy's Big Time Victim, Strange Thing by Night, and this outcast self-conscious over you, we felt we were strong enough to do it. We needed a venue, so I got all dressed up and went up to Queen's University and told them, my name is Terry Hooley from the Belfast Music Society. I want to book the McMorty Hall, which is now called the Mandela Hall. And they said, Mr. Hooley, that will be five pound. And they gave me a receipt. Is that it? I asked. Yes, it's in the book for Thursday the 15th of June, and it's all yours. That was too easy, I thought. For sure enough, it turned out that they thought I was from Queen's Classical Society when they found out that I had hired the hall out to seven punk bands, Rudy the Outcasts, Undertones, Roof Ricks, etc. And it was a major punk gig. They freaked out. I always knew that universities were seats of learning. And I can tell you that I learned a few dirty tricks over the next few days as Queen's University tried everything in their power to disrupt the gig. But this was too big an opportunity. I've always believed in Northern Ireland and here we had a bunch of people, seven bands, who were determined to have their 15 minutes of fame and it was a chance to stand on the stage and perform in front of a real audience and a real benefit that it was in their own hometown. Queen's tried to stop me getting lights, PA and other equipment into the building but they hadn't counted on the ace I had up my sleeve and that was the local Hells Angels, the chosen few. Having grown up in the 60s as a hippie and in the 70s I was an activist and became great friends with the local Hells Angels chapter in Belfast. I got them to do the door and concert security. Hundreds and hundreds of kids turned up from all over the country making it one of the best nights of my life. All my hippie friends and bikers and punk friends were all there. It was a mad, mad mixture of people, but it was a fantastic concert. That's the night I got barred from Queen's University for life. <laughs>